What's up, Zox fam? We're back for day three for the Dislike Beginner's Guide for 2024. Now, we're going to be jumping into quite a bit. We got some things I want to cover um, as far as things I did off cam, uh, some things as far as pushing into uh, a little bit further into Kronos. We have some upkeep things we got to do with a Pep and Fafnir just a little bit, but we'll kind of show how you can do that just to get those missions down. Um, and then as well as now promoting, right? We're going to talk about a little bit of promotion. Who should you be focusing with that? Because I know that that's going to end up coming up and that's very very important as well all right so we're going to jump right into it uh now the first thing is is that obviously what have we accomplished what have we done and what was pivotal right uh so essentially we are currently in hard mode eight dash four uh easy mode we are all the way in chapter uh 12 and we're at the last last node here which is going to be 12-16 so i just need to complete that and then if we go back in purgatory which is the next difficulty that you will unlock we are currently sitting at chapter three so we have a whole bunch of story that we've been able to complete within the last uh three days roughly um and this is the start to the third day so we'll have uh some breaks in between the video to kind of close off the day um as we go through content so uh with that this is where we're starting at um, for the day, essentially just kind of grinding, getting these things done. Um, and then when we're looking at what was pivotal, once you hit, uh, I think it's story 5-1, um, and that's for hard, uh, you're going to start collecting these boxes here for Tang Chuang and Liling. Uh, it's the Divinate Opt Box Fragment. So every 100 of these, you will be able to collect a copy of the Divinate for either Tang Chuang or Liling. You can choose. Um, that is going to be respective to what your favorite is or what you have, right? So that's going to be very, very important there. Now, I do want to also touch on the fact that we did get the Jin Cho box, but we're not going to be worrying about that just yet because I wanted to make sure that we're kind of consolidating what we're working on for right now and the things that you want to use him for you don't necessarily need him just yet um, so even though you can technically open him at account 30 it's just kind of no point we're not really going to be investing or building him just yet so don't worry we're going to get to him but uh, I just want to touch on that we are going to be using him though so don't think that he's going to be useless just hold on to him all right uh, now the next thing okay we got uh, the story component the next thing we did uh, on the event we got Laling to level 40 so that actually completed uh these missions right here right uh so we have those done so the next push we're doing or we're going for is level 50 then ascension 5 and then we'll be able to promote to six star and once we get to six star that's what we're really trying to push here we'll really be able to revert those resources back and dumping them into other espers that we might have or want to invest in at that point uh now outside of that when we're looking at the path to mastery, we finished D3 already. Um, D3 is actually pretty easy. A lot of these will actually end up being retroactive. So if you're playing the game as you should be, uh, some the next day will open up and you'll actually have a good chunk of these missions already done. Uh, so we ended up getting Death Guard Hay already, um, or no, Death Guard Bai, sorry. We got Death Guard Bai already, which is Xie Um, Now with that, we're going to be building him just not yet. We're just gonna keep him where he's at for now. You could technically use him on your chronos though okay I, I will say early game chronos you can't technically use um the uh twins there so that's another thing like if you find that you don't have certain things you can make use of these units uh now of course with that we also have the share to you uh who will actually be getting on the fifth day right so that's what we're kind of working up towards but again that's just that now uh outside of that i think that basically covers everything in here at least uh uh, as far as what we've been able to accomplish. And again, guys, showing you this is day three. Day three, okay? All right, day three. So let's jump into our Kronos. Take a look at a Pep and Fafnir. Uh, what have we accomplished and what are we pushing for today? All right. Uh, so, so far, we've gotten our Kronos up to floor seven. Now, floor seven is actually really important because this is where you're going to enter into the daily loop of being able to farm up those shards for the characters that are uh, going to be very pivotal for you. So if you don't have a Zer Dragon or Era, you're going to be able to start farming their shards once you complete difficulty seven. So that is your initial goal, right? We're going to always try to push higher 
but getting to this is going to be pretty massive for your account because then you'll be able to actually build up better units that are more fitting for that now in total it is going to require you i think it's 30 days i'm pretty sure this i think the way they did it i think you literally need to farm this a little bit um a little bit more than obviously the epics um but for the fatum sisters there's also for a pep you have queen mother uh you'll have um i think it's 30 days that you need to farm for you to be able to guarantee that copy if i recall i think it is 30 days but outside of that um that's going to be a little bit later but up until then we're going to already have tried to complete 16 um what you're going for though is for consistency so that's a unit that you can add later on if you're finding that your comp isn't as consistent then she can actually help out or they can really help out really well right now the other thing too guys and i want to give you guys this little cheat code a lot of people don't realize that um, there is a way for you to get these first time clears. There's two reasons why we want to get these first time clear, obviously, so that we can go into the next difficulty. Right. But also for your expos. Right. So your expeditions is based off of. So you see here how we have our Kronos difficulty six. That's the last one that I cleared. Anytime that you first time clear something, it will update that ritual miracle. So it does not matter if you use the friend or if you cleared it on your own. So what we're gonna do, right? And this is a huge reason as to why you wanna add friends is we're gonna actually use our friends to our advantage. So add people, go to the official Discord, join my Discord, have some of us add you as a hyper carry for a stage if need be. Um, so let me see if I have anyone on my friends list that might be able to help us get through this. Um, I see Big Mac has a Gaius that's level 40, which that can be pretty helpful. So we're gonna go ahead and probably snag him, right? So. So, uh, I don't see anyone else like we don't have anyone else that's like really offering a defense break maybe Embla but she's just kind of low so we're gonna go with the Gaius right so we're gonna take a Zerg Dragon out we're gonna see what this team does I'm not sure what's gonna happen here but we're going to see. So going for the first time clear is going to be really important. Now, as far as the comp, I will come back to breaking down the comp and like your layouts and your uh, alternatives just in case. OK, uh, but the goal is here is we're going to go and try to clear this with a friend. And then later on, we're going to actually establish our own team. But this is just so that we can get the higher reward output from expeditions. And then we're going to, like I said, clear it ourselves. Right. So it's not like we're just re solely relying. You can't use friends to just farm this infinitely you are going to need to perfect this on your own but this is a little bit of a cheat code that you can utilize to your advantage so that while that expo is going on you're accumulating some uh bigger and better resources so let's actually see how they perform i'm not 100 sure if we'll be able to get it but let's hope <laughs> Let, let's at least hope right all right so Let's see, Kronos. Kronos is probably gonna hit pretty hard, uh, especially once he gets uh, some turns down. So let's see, we do got the Seer, which is pretty nice. So that's some extra damage. I wish we could get a defense break on the comp, but we just don't have anyone that I like have built up just yet to do it. All right, so we got that immunity coverage. All right, let's see what he does with that. Okay, not too bad. Buff blocker, nice with the standoff there. Okay. Okay, we're doing we're doing pretty okay. All right, we just we just need to survive. <laughs> we just need to survive. Um, all right, so we're coming close to like the tail end. We got another seer. Nice, got that defense break removed. That was actually pretty massive. <clears throat> all right, so we're at the halfway point here, and like I said, being able to clear this is going to be pretty massive for our team overall. Hopefully Chang Pu survives. Yes, she does. Okay, so she does survive that. Guy should go into, yes, nice. We got another pushback, another immunity coverage and some heals. Okay, we might be able to actually do this. So this actually might go, this might be, be okay. As long as uh, these ads don't kill me. Oh my God. Uh, let's see. Okay, because, okay, nice. We, I don't know if Chunk Poo's, or, uh, hung, okay, okay, we're good, we're good, we're good. Yeah, because I was like, that defense break is a little worrisome, um, especially at this point in the fight. Nice, okay, we're good. We we are actually perfect. <laughs> we're actually perfect right now. Um, okay, so we should be able to clean this up. All right, and there we go. All right, so we beat our first time clear on Chrono 7. Now, again, I'm gonna go over some alternatives in your team layout um, just so that you can get through it. But again, 
add friends guys because again look at this this is going to be getting us some of these level 40 pieces they're going to be much better overall um especially once you're starting to try to consider what pieces you're leveling they're also going to be a lot more common in the percentile stats that you need so these are going to honestly super spike your characters as well right um so right first time clear now i want to show you guys what i was talking about because um like I said, that is a huge cheat code. So let's go to the trials here and then go to, uh, oh, sorry, expeditions. And now, even though technically I didn't clear it with my own, like 100% my own units, now when we go for sending out our units for expeditions, it's going to now give us difficulty seven drops and not six. Uh, so seven is obviously the most that we can do right now, which is fine for day three, right? We're, on, we're already, if you think about that, we have to get to 16, we're already a little less than halfway, right? So uh, by day four, we should be able to get into eight and nine, right? That's what our goal is, right? Um, um, so with that, that's already taken care of. But as far as your own layout, okay, guys, uh, there's a couple of different things that you can utilize here, right? Now, as far as uh, what I was using before, this does work. Um, obviously, it would need a little bit more investment, but this team comp is perfectly fine. Uh, you would have some AP pushback, single target uh, nuking coming from reserve dragging, sustaining Hungyue or Changpu. Now, if you don't have Hungyue, you can use Yasihua. All right, Yasihua is going to be that ripple dimension. Let's actually see if we have any ripple dimensions in chat, because then that would just be easier to show you. There we go. So this is Yesihua right here. Um, absolutely important to make sure you get her. Also with Meredith too, I don't think there's any Meredith's here, unfortunately, but Meredith is going to be another Esper. Just to show you really quick, I'll talk about both of them. Um, they are going to be some great alternatives for sustained support, and I would argue with Meredith also damage um, because she's an HP percent damager, right? So let's go all the way. Oh, let's go all the way down to Yesihua. Now, Yesihua is going to be granting you an attack up and defense up, right? Very, very important. Um, and that's on a three-turn cooldown once it's max skilled. Uh, you're also going to have the Astral Guardian, which is going to be healing and then granting invincibility. If you're using Ali, um, she is an alternative outside of the damage aspect, but for that sustain, she will heal the target that is like at the lowest HP threshold. And that could actually one aggro uh, Chrono still and then prevent them from dying, right? Because they're going to take zero damage. And then she has a attack break in her S1, okay? Um, so that's going to be one of your alternatives. As far as another damage dealer, so if you don't have the Azure Dragon, go for Leon. Leon can actually work very, very well. He does single target nuking. He inflicts that sear that you see that was helping increase that damage by 25%. He also procs disease. So technically, you can use him in early game uh, a pep as well if you really wanted to. Um, and then before attacking, he transfers a debuff to the target. So that defense break, before if he is defense broke, and then he gets his turn he's going to transfer that back to uh chronos so that also could be a huge advantage for you um and i think that that's something a lot of people sleep on he's really really good there um now outside of that i would say like obviously you have Changpu, who we've talked about a crap ton uh in the um epics at least that you're going to have pretty accessible to you right away uh meredith is going to be your other option she's going to be doing the hp percent damage and as well as healing and granting speed up so she's actually really really insane to have on a party for support um then she has defense up crit resist and granted the element is another thing right but it doesn't matter this is early so you'll be fine um and then in her s1 she has a 35 percent chance of dispelling one buff and then she also grants you a speed lead for ritual miracle desolate lance uh sonic miracle Son uh, sentinel hunt and falsetto fantasy which she actually is used in all of these so again this is a unit that has extremely high value because she's slotted in a lot of meta teams um and she's free to play accessible right uh so that's basically the alternative alternatives for doing chronos okay uh, and like i said the goal that you have in mind is to try to clear as high as you can even if you can't farm it just yet because you're going to be able to at some point within the you know the time frame of you playing right um now the thing is is that also with a pep and fafnir one of the next missions you have up probably at around this point is you need to clear up to stage four you can literally use your team like i use this team here it's the Ling, sachiko uh drew uh hung Yue. if you don't have hung Yue, use the yesi hua and chang pu 
perfectly fine, right? Uh, and then also for Fafnir, uh, we're using the basically the same stuff we got. I actually went and used my Kronos stuff basically, and then just threw in Laling. Um, so he's actually there for just the multi hitting, so we could break the shield faster. He does have the defense break, which does help. Um, so these aren't like super crazy. Like again, just to kind of show you what point I'm making, we're not building those other units yet, but you do want to keep those units in mind. So if you do have the Louis or Li Guang, like if you don't have certain units, it's okay to build one of those to kind of help assist out. But again, your main focus is Kronos, okay? Uh, so with that, we do have Andres unlocked. We're going to be attempting Andres when the time comes. So when the game tells you to start focusing on that, just to kind of work on it, then that's fine. But we're not really farming this just yet. Not, not at all. Kronos is still, like I said, king. Um, so we're going to go back. And we're going to focus on the next component here, which is actually going to be star promotion. So uh, star promotion will unlock at a uh, certain point with you pushing through story. Um, and once this star promotion mission unlocks, you want to start doing it right um, now. Who exactly is going to be your first six star? I know that that's going to be a really, really big question as well. Um, that is actually going to be probably more than likely Lilane. But I'll be covering that once we get to the point of actually six starring our first unit, because you still have to raise raise your account level and get that level cap raised so that you can even do that in the first place, right? Um, so we're in the basic side. So you have to level up a rare or epic Esper to level 40. And an Esper I decided to do with this was actually Jiang Mong. And that's who I would advise you guys to do. Um, if not, you can still do Chang Pu. You can do honestly anyone really that you are use, using for you to clear content currently, whether it be Kronos or Story, right? Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and claim these extra rewards. Now, the next thing is asking is to fuse one, uh, to get, uh, to fuse to get one four star starter mod so let's actually go and do that uh now if we go to um and i actually don't know why it takes you here if the units oh actually no she is max so let's actually go to convert materials right and then we're going to fuse for one so it takes five three star starimon to make one epic starimon okay just to kind of give you that perspective so we're going to go ahead and remix that and there we go. Now we have 10 of those and that's going to actually equal out to, um, so we have four, it costs four for you to take a four star to five star. And then I think it's five, uh, five star, um, star Mon to go to six star, right? Um, so we're going to go back real quick just to collect that. And then the next thing is going to say, right? So we got that. Um, promote one Esper to five star. So we're going to go ahead and do that for uh, Jiang Mong. Um, you could do it for uh, Chang Pu for bulk, but we're going to do it for uh, Jiang Mong because she is one of our DPS and we need her base stats to go up uh, so that we can actually perform a lot better with her Nether Bloom proc. So we're going to go ahead and do this first promotion. All right. And then this is actually the first five star that we've made on the account. Now, this is another thing as to why you want to start up your characters, okay? And this is why I want to show you guys this. For each attribute that you five star and you six star for the first time, there are going to be rewards that will um, allow you um, for each day that you log in, you'll get rewards sent to your inbox. So if you have a whole bunch of units that you're working on um, at the same time, some people like to do like a flow, a wind, an inferno, um, and then like a shimmer so that you can get these star promotion rewards all at once and they have these rewards collectively coming in um but it doesn't really matter because it's going to happen whenever it happens for you so again just noting that you will get some extra rewards the exp ascension that's uh nexus crystals a gold record at the end of it for you actually taking the time to invest in this unit so it's kind of like some kickback on that investment which is really nice right all right so right there that is my, currently to my level cap my highest level so i need to actually push more levels 36 so that we can start going to level 42 so we'll probably be able to hit that by tomorrow so day four roughly we should be able to start working on our first six star that's at least the goal here right um so with that we now have ling at five star who's a nat five star we have jiang mong at five star obviously liora because that's one that we pulled um and you might have more than me i've seen some people's accounts already and y'all accounts look crazy um so again we have chang pu and we also have the uh azure dragon and the hong yue uh already built up okay now we got that and this is going to be giving us a five star uh abilamon so we're going to go ahead and claim that and that's going to take us into the advanced side so the advanced side is level up one esper to level 50 and that's what's going to be pushing us into our first uh five star um 
uh, or sorry, our first six star unit. So we'll probably have this done by at least tomorrow or at least be prepared to do it by tonight. Um, but I'll save that for day four. OK, so I just want to kind of talk about the beginning of the promotion process just so that you guys were kind of understood what you needed to be doing. But you essentially that's why you have to farm as much story as you can, because that's going to be pushing your level. You're going to be gaining extra stamina from that and you're going to be getting a good amount of EXP from that as well. OK, uh, so that's basically that right now um outside of that let's claim everything that we have so always just make sure you claim everything because it could be some extra gold or resources that you could use at that time uh time being uh but yeah we got that basically out of the way now the next things that i want to do now i'm going to have full-blown guides for these um just because you really want to when the time comes to really have your team fleshed out uh for the forwarder projection you want to at least start attempting to do this to contribute to uh, ranking and getting your guild resources, right? Uh, so we're just going to literally throw whatever we have built. <laughs> like, I, I, like we're not going crazy because we don't have much to work with in the first place. Um, and then we're just going to actually run a battle. I know this first one is more so about survivability more than anything. So uh, actually, no, we're doing forwarder. I think there needs to be a tank of some sort, which we don't have just yet. So it's perfectly fine. You're going to literally run what you can. Um, you can do any of them really at this point. It doesn't really matter. Um, I'm not going to try to optimize your team comps because they're just not going to be optimized, especially for what is required. You're probably not even going to be investing those units just yet, but you at least want to do this so that you're getting a score up on the board, right? Like that's the most important thing is that you're at least contributing to this so that your team or your gift um is actually going to see some ranking stuff coming out of this right all right so let's see we're gonna we're gonna just attempt this like i said this is just kind of like an anything team um at least if we score something that'll be better than nothing and you should actually if i'm not mistaken i actually think you uh are getting strong stones now so that should be something that can help contribute to your investment of your units as you're trying to do uh more of the uh, beat belt right um, so it looks like we got like almost past the E. They ain't really rocking with us. They ain't letting us go any higher. It's perfectly fine. All right, there we go. Oh, no, he's still alive. Okay, yeah, we got E+. Plus. <laughs> <laughs> all right, there you go. So like I said, you want to do that for all of them because you want to be getting these strong stones, right? It does not matter that these are the base ones, but you want to start getting them. Uh, kind of keep in mind also too what units you're currently building because those units more than likely will be being used in your beat bout. So we are using an Inferno unit. So we're going to go ahead and grab that, right? And that's basic, right? And that also still contributes to the points being taken down. And you're also still getting the club points, right? So you want to make sure you're doing this. It does not matter. I promise you guys, it does not matter. Um, do as much of this as you can. It, it does not matter. You want to at least be acquiring it so that you can still, when you're, as you're leveling this up, you already have accumulated resources and then you can start buying stuff out of here, right? So that's kind of the goal. Um, now, it could be argued you could start buying some more rare star in mind, but honestly, I would say until you hit that roadblock, try to save for everything else. So you can start trying to get like the Fabrice Ripples. Um, he's actually a pretty solid Esper or you can start saving for pools um that is up to you but i would say level three might take a little bit just depending on your guild so we'll see how that goes but nonetheless you got fabrice ripples and starimon unlocked um i would say starimon is probably the general go-to for most but because the fabrice ripples take more time some people actually might be more willing to go for that first with the discount and that's a purchase of like two a week so if you can go for that too that actually would actually be pretty beneficial for you all right all right so we covered that um like i said just do the same thing just get scores up there um now we should also have point war Point War should be unlocked. Now, I want to talk about this and I have to talk about this on this day because Point War, you need to do this to a degree, right? Uh, the reason why is because that, you know, that Sachiko that we've been building, they give you the base copy from Story, but all the remaining copies that you need, you need to uh, actually be pushing upwards to Tier 16. Now, Tier 16 is definitely going to take more than 30 days for you to be able to acquire, but that's why I said if we can at least get her to that R4, Tier 12 is going to be pretty sweet. 
Um, and I feel like that's a little bit more doable. We're already pushing into tier four. The most important thing as far as like a defense, a, a team that you're using, um, it's just going to have to be whatever your strongest units are. None of your units are really going to be optimized to be PVP-esque, if that makes sense. Um, unless like, again, you got some other alternatives or you got like an Ana early or, you know, you just got some of those more meta PVP units. For the most part, use what you generally have. Um, that will get you through this uh, more than likely than some of the other things. Um, so I'm just using the generalized PVE team that I'm using. I got a 3.6 defense score, so that's perfectly fine. But we just find whoever we can possibly beat. Um, try to just blitz it. You can sit there and do the fight. Rather, you just blitz it just to save time. Um, and then we're going to be just trying to rank up as quickly as we possibly can so we can get into other pieces of content. This team might beat me. Not sure. Okay, nope, we beat. We won that one. So yeah, you just do as many of these blitzes. Now there's points that go all the way down now too. So use those and then reset, all right, or refresh. So the good thing about this game is that the PVP system is done in a way to where it does not cost you anything to reset your opponent. So even if you are, say for example, these are all people that you couldn't beat, reset it right and that's perfectly fine it's going to give you another layout um and that's what you're going to take advantage of now this team right here is actually fairly stronger we're going to stay away from that i'm 100 percent sure double freeze um they're probably faster uh because they are using a speed lead we are going to stay far away from that we're going to go for this other leora team um, and just like I said, we're trying to make sure that every ticket we use is equaling a W and we're not actually losing. Right. Um, so this team, we should be able to beat. And then this should put us at point war four, basically. Yeah, this person's already using like, look at this. Look at this. Look at this crap, dude. Already starting. So hopefully we can kill that. Yeah, we should be good. It's kind of early anyway. So uh, we're good. Right. All right. So we're in tier four. All right. Cool, cool, cool. And then you also want to do this because there are going to be more vouchers given for the more rounds that you do. So we're going to reset that and then we're going to do our last few. And oh, that team is going to clap me. Nope, nope, nope. They got uh, all they need to do is go once with that comp. Um, this is pretty. Ooh, I was I did not see that Raven. See, that's right there. You lose your streaks if you lose. So don't mess up like I just did, um, because, yeah, you lose your streaks. That just kind of sucks. Oh, yeah. See, yeah, these teams, these teams are letting me have it. Now, the only only other nice thing, too, is that if you are at this point, you don't lose streaks. So it's OK. It's OK if you take L's like or you don't lose points um, and drop tiers. Like it's once you get up higher that that happens. So let's finally go positive. There we go. All right. Cool. So that is that. Now, if you do want to buy supply uh, or uh, admission certificates, you can. But. I really wouldn't advise it. It just becomes too pricey. And you can realistically, within the 30 days, you can get to where you need to be um, within a realistic amount of time. So that right there, just hitting the tier four, we already have accomplished getting our first rezo for our Sachiko. And we're just going to go and give her that because that's going to actually increase the value of one of her abilities and her kit. Right. So final damage on the pollen strike is increased by 10 percent. And that is our first dupe that we have gotten for her. Right. So sweet. Now, um, outside of that, guys, that basically covers the uh, arena that covers what you want to do for pushing your chronos, um, the alternatives for it, uh, as well as like the promotion aspect. Now, we're going to do a little bit more grinding because I want to try to see if we can try to maybe do floor eight. We're going to try. OK, uh, so we'll see how much more grinding we can do. And then we will actually be right back. Now, I almost forgot about this, and it's the Q Miracle and Scaling Up, okay? I want to talk about that just a little bit. Again, skill priorities is going to be very self-explanatory, but real quick, the Q Miracle, guys, we're currently doing Floor 2, so keep in mind this resets every 48 hours, so um, it's not going to obviously be activated. Like, So you'll see this, I'll probably talk about this every other video, um, just because it's not going to be active. Now, the thing is, is that the enemies on the second floor are like level 28. You're literally going to be autoing these, so it doesn't really matter. You're not really too concerned with like any strategies or specific units just yet. You can literally take the units you've been using to get through this um so 
while I was in the process of actually grinding up my account, uh, I wanted to touch on this because I know some players are going to be asking like, oh, do I need to set up certain things later on? I'll say probably when you get about to like floor s- maybe five through eight, somewhere around there, that's when we'll be a little bit more conscious of developing more espers that can help perform here. But you don't want to go too crazy because, again, you want to make sure that their espers has given you value in other uh, other portions of the game. So you get level 20 gear here. Are you really going to be using that probably not so um we're just going to beat this boss really with the goal for getting the advanced strong stone op boxes and then the basic right now the other thing is too we're going to have a video uh probably a day where when we're trying to really focus beat bouts uh where we actually are going to be tackling um you know strong stones and who to invest first and stuff like that because it's using rival runes which is not using your um your relics that you currently have uh so this should be done in a second i kind of like the fact too like at least with the earlier stuff they made sure that the enemies were relatively right according to their levels so like a unit that's level 28 doesn't have like ascension three for example so it needs to be a unit at the respective level so you're not fighting anything too overly like tuned um until it's at the proper levels right so that right there is basically q miracle and then we're going to get these extra resources again that's exp so you want to make sure you're doing that uh we also have uh now 20 ripples for death guard hay this is why i said we probably will end up getting death guard hay from and actually no we'll probably still get him on d5 we'll probably have him and a copy of him by d5 because this technically right now still has for me at least 31 hours so there's still a whole nother day that we'd have to wait before this reset so unfortunately we have to wait there um real quick on calamity island uh calamity island guys just use what you have of those respective attributes even if it's a weaker unit it's perfectly fine um like for each attribute i say the only one you might not have much for yet is maybe wind um so building up units like your uh louis at some point one of these are going to probably suffer for at least right now it's okay um you're going to eventually get back into it and then sunday has it to where all these dungeons open up but for the first one um i think the first day i didn't even have it unlocked yet so it was probably wind or inferno but this is our actual first day being um, able to actually do it. So I just took in my uh, flow units and we were fine. Uh, so just doing as much of this as you can. Consider these to be extra rewards. It's not like too crazy just yet, right? Uh, Spatial Tower, we pushed all the way up to floor 30 as well, just to kind of cover on that. Probably going to do some more pushing because the stages, level 32 enemies, we can handle that, right? Um, so we're going to probably be pushing for 35 to 40 at this point now. And keep in mind, guys, this is day three, right? So we have, if we go all the way up, 100 floors that we need to accomplish within this time frame, which is going to be very doable. It's not as bad as you think, I promise. Um, so, yeah, we're going to have formations and comps that I'll come up with for you guys so you'll be able to use that. Um, but that's that. Now, last thing I want to cover before we get into the rest of my farming and we come back again um, is actually skilling up. OK, uh, skill ups. I will say there are no missions required for you to skill up your Ling or your Sun Wukong. So you do not have to worry about skill focusing them. Now, I will say, depending on what you ended up getting, if you got something more valuable in your account, don't be afraid to ask in the comment section as well uh, if something's worth scaling up on your account. Um, I'm going to personally hold off on any legendaries for right now because we are going to be doing more pools at some point. So I don't want to actually dive into legendary Bellamon just yet when those units might become usable to me. But what I am going to do is I am going to be leveling up like my healer, for example. We're going to go ahead and level up Chang Pu. Now, it's also important to note, guys, what, what, when and at what point is it good to uh you know invest in a unit skill up wise when you're trying to determine who to skill up uh one is accessibility to their skill ups three stars are really easy to get even in the beginning they're the easiest thing to get um but even then you want to consider what is the uh level ability that you're getting so for her she's getting a skill cooldown right uh, there are going to be some abilities that just might give damage that might not be worth in comparison to skilling uh you know cooling down someone's ability to heal or cooling down somebody's ability to uh buff you right so that's going to be more valuable to you that's why she's going to be one of my first ones that i go for because a two time a two turn uh single target nuking basically heal or massive heal is huge and then on top of that a uh what is this going to drop it to a three turn aoe heal that's going to make our looping so much easier so much uh, so much more seamless 
and it's perfectly fine if you max them out because the other thing is too she does have the ability to like or for example here right this is actually a perfect example like when it comes down to the s1 unless the s1 really is doing something super groundbreaking um like right here we have a 90 percent chance of reducing the enemy's ap by 15 percent. that's perfectly fine where she's at the 100 percent chance i mean when you get to that point later on when you have excess uh three star billamon go ahead and use them but the main skills we're always going to be focused on usually is s2 s3 depends on the unit if it's a passive usually if it has skill ups then there's one thing but if it's a passive with no skill ups it doesn't matter um but yeah we want those so if you get like for example the s2 and the s3 done first you can stop skilling a unit up right so don't feel like you need to keep going because that that's just not going to be the metric uh it's random and that's also going to help you shave down um what important skills you're being able to finish on some characters if you're lucky and then moving on to the next one right uh now for our epic unit we're going to actually start working on our jiang mong a little bit more so let's go to her abilities ability upgrade so where did see like right here she just has passive and s1 um she She's one of our damage dealers, right? And that's kind of the important thing with her, but then her S3 has the ability cooldown. So if her S3 actually skills up first, then we'll actually uh, stop and then that, that'll that be that. So we're at level four for both of these. We have two more that can go into that one, two more that can go into the S1. Uh, so we'll do these one by one just to see what we get if we get lucky no it doesn't look like it's gonna it doesn't look like it's gonna be nice if it goes into the first one again then we just use the two okay well let's see let's see if we can get that one extra all right and okay yeah it went right into s1 so that's fine all right so if it would have been the other way then we would have actually waited on that and then moved on to the next four star that we're investing in um but she is going to be a unit you use for quite some time so that's not a bad investment right uh now another one we have is hung yue hung yue is not going to be bad either hung yue has a passive that also has skill ups involved in it um so we have nine abilamon left this is actually going to be really good for her because it's going to help out with our uh like i said with her consistency in everything you use her for whether it be chronos or it be a pep um, or even fafnir right um so we're gonna go ahead and do that so nice it went into just the s3 and the passive which is pretty huge to be honest um and then hopefully these can max just those out okay so let's see so we got five five and okay yeah so that's max for in her passive and her s3 is is max so we're not going to push the s1 right now okay uh we'll do that at another point when we actually need that dispelling chance but we do not need to go any further so we're completely done with her now right uh so hung yue would actually be another one um of course for your other three stars like you'll see hua like getting her cooldowns down would be really good um if you're using berenice or even your drew so so you have options right um but i definitely would advise you guys to hold off on the uh the five stars for now but i'll have a whole nother video coming for like uh you know a tier list for a Billamon priorities uh based off of what you guys might have and what the unit does um and what you might be trying to need them to do depending on if you're early to mid game all right so we're going to get back into the farm and then we'll be back to finish up day three Okay, guys, so we actually went and did a couple of different things. We grinded up some resources, so I'm going to be breaking down, doing that stuff with you guys as we're alternating into some better pieces of gear. Uh, I did farm a little bit of Floor 7, and I'm going to talk about Memo Chips. I haven't mentioned Memo Chips yet, but if you do have Nexus Crystals to get some, it's not bad to get those. It's like 1,000 Crystals for 1,000, so it's a one-to-one -one trade off, so it's not really bad, but that's going to allow you to be able to skip function um, or use the skip function better. If you don't mind sitting through the multi-battle it is perfectly fine you can save yourself the nexus crystals but if you are short on time and you're still trying to push that progression then you can buy those memo chips don't just don't make it a habit to buy them all the time because you're going to be getting those from, from events and shops right now i do want to talk about the equipment fusion they do start you out initially with like a basic fusion uh this is actually going to be our first five star piece I'm going to advise you guys to do a flat stat piece. Um, so for flat stat pieces, that's going to be your top pieces here. The bottom ones are going to be percentile uh, because we are going to be trying to shift into more percentile based stuff. Um, the flat ones, yeah, you'll get them arguably, but it's also safe to say as well that your chances of getting a better uh, fixed attack piece or fixed defense piece is going to be way better than getting a percent 
based. Like it's just a much lower chance of that happening, right? Uh, so what we're gonna go for, we're just gonna do a simple attack piece since we want our damage dealers uh, to be built up to some degree. So we're gonna go ahead and infuse this chest piece. It doesn't really matter which, right? So this is actually our first attack uh, five-star piece or level 50 piece. Um, so attack HP bonus with attack, we are definitely using this piece. It's a really, really good piece. Um, so we're gonna go back now like I said, I did a little bit of farming uh, for the Ling's build. We're probably going to keep what he has on. There's not really much that needs to be changed with him just because for what it's worth, what he what he is doing. Um, we're not changing him right now. Chang Pu, we are going to mess around with her build. So a lot of people don't actually realize that Chang Pu is an attack scaling healer, right? Um, so heals all allies healing 15% of their max HP and 100% of Chang Pu's uh, attack. A lot of people don't know that. So those just stack HP, but then have like no attack value on her. So we are going to be trying to put some attack on her so we can get her a little bit more usable. Since it's a ring right here, we're going to go ahead and take that. And let's see, do we have another piece? Defense bonus, that's not bad. Um, we'll take that for uh, for that piece as well. And then do we have a feasible chess piece with some accuracy? We will take it. All right, so I say for her, that's perfectly fine with everything else she has on. We don't have to swap everything um, because we want to put some other pieces on some other characters before we level. Uh, with Jiang Mong, honestly, she's probably okay. She has an HP bonus piece for now, and I'm not really going to mess around with that. What I am going to do, though, we are going to put Jiang Mong on a speed set. Oh, you know what? That's on uh, Chang Pu. So hold on. Let's see. We're going to... I don't, I mean, we do technically need attack. I'd rather have flat attack on a speed for her though. So we're going to actually put her on a speed set. Reason being is because we kind of want Jiang Mong to be rotating faster than everyone so that they can proc her nether bloom, right? So since we're running a defense piece anyway, we're just going to go ahead and replace that. That's perfectly fine for now. Um, we have some level 30s that we can take advantage of. So let's actually do a filter here. Let's do this properly. So yeah, we don't have any attack uh, pieces on the filter for speed for wind. Um, so if we have any flat attacks or accuracies, we can probably use those for now. Um, but honestly, we just really want the wind set more than anything. So we're just going to do that. Uh, let's see here. We're going to also let's do this. Now, I will say you can do attack if you have a um, a uh, speed boot. If you end up getting a like lucky and getting a speed boot early, which I doubt I got one, cause that that that's another thing. Like those, a little bit rare to drop, um, especially in the beginning. But if you get a speed boot, then that's gonna be pretty good for your character. Um, but for right now, we want the one set, right? So twenty six. So that puts her at one. What is that? One thirty two in terms of speed. So we want her rotating before everybody. Like she should always be the first person going um, just so we can always have another bloom to be detonated. Right. Uh, so that's going to be pretty huge there. Then uh, we also have Leora. Now, keep in mind, we're going to also be leveling these pieces, guys. I know I didn't level them, so I'm not going to forget. Uh, let's go ahead and swap this crit rate piece out because she does actually uh, use a crit rate build. Um, then the attack bonus piece we'll have to leave for now unless we have like a better level 30. Uh, so yeah, there we go. So we got a better le level 30 right there. Then I would say, let's see, do we have another level 30 that's kind of nice? Um, I mean, we'll just use this one for now. Higher base stats. And then this one might be alternated out with this one. Or actually, we can we can actually give her the new five star piece that we got. All right. So there we go. So that will be Leora for right now. We're not going to go too crazy. Like I said, we're not trying to super fine tune this because characters kits and stuff are going to end up changing. Um, we are going to throw this attack bonus, though, so we can get a little bit more value out of that. And I guess we'll give a little bit more bulk to Leora. All right. So there we go. OK, so these are going to be. Um, oh, and last piece. Oh, my God. I actually swapped that out with the wrong set. My bad, guys. So we'll just go bulk. We'll just go a little. I guess we'll go. 
Yeah, yeah, I guess we'll have to do it. Yeah, we'll have to do bulk. That's fine. We'll have to just rock with it for right now. Uh, these pieces are not going to be perfect by no means. I, I like trying to stop myself because I like to perfect everything, but you cannot do that right now. It's just not feasible. Um, so to make your life easy, that's what we're going to end up doing. Uh, Hungiwei, I think we're going to probably, let's see what Quick Equip gives her. Probably give her pretty solid pieces for now. Um, this is fine, honestly. It's going to have to work. So we're just going to go ahead and do that. And then there's going to be some missions that you also have up where you have to plus 12 some um, some of these pieces. So we're going to go ahead and uh, quick enhance to plus 12. Um, and the ones that will go up to plus 12, it'll tell you how much gold you spent. So we uh, spent 554K. Um, you could try to level it on your own and see if your luck yeah, comes through for you. But I mean, it, it's not that deep. So we'll go for that uh, with her. I feel like we also are going to level up Leora as well. Okay. So that costs 740,000, right? So I think that that's almost all of my gold. Yeah, so we got like 10K left. What you're gonna do for more gold, guys, is, and let's actually accept this. Uh, what you're gonna do for more gold is you're gonna actually start selling those pieces that you are not using, right? Um, that's how you're going to uh, kind of filter out getting more gold. Now, also one of the shops is going to be relevant to the Ritual Miracle. You're gonna start buying gold from there too. Now, I have not talked about that shop just yet, um, but if you did do any farming, even if it was a little bit, you should be able to come in here and start buying some gold, right? So we're going to come in here and we're going to buy some gold and then we're going to sell that excess equipment. So that's 300 K right there. Right. Um, and then we're going to go to our characters, go to equip, hold and press down on your gear, go to bulk manage. And then we're going to actually start getting rid of pieces that are really, really low in levels. So 5, 10, 15, 20. And I would even say at this point, we're going to start getting rid of some of those 25s, right? We do not need those. So the thing about that is that we're going to go to select all. That's another 300K right there. And then we're going to hit bulk sell. And I promise you, you will not be missing those pieces at all uh, because your characters like as of right now have been purely really mainly operating off of their base stats, right? Like just their innate things that they get. Um, so what we're going to do here, we're going to quick enhance, but we're only going to go to plus nine because I want to make sure I have a little bit of gold uh, for um, Hung Yue. So we'll do plus nine for Chang Pu. Okay. And then we're going to also do plus nine for, uh, for Hung Yue, right? All right, there we go. So that actually should have fit, uh, fit in the parameters of the amount of gold I had. So I still have 100K left. Um, so again, guys, it will vary based off of what you have, but you just got to make it make it work for now. Um, but you're going to basically rinse and repeat that process. You gear your characters. It will get better in terms of gear. You'll be able to actually focus on the pieces you want. Right now, the whole goal is to clear, right? Um, so I did use a friend to, to uh, try to clear eight, which I was, or I was able to actually clear eight, but it's not consistent. So we're going to try to clear this again real quick. Um, and this will be the last thing um, for like our objectives for the day that we'll be trying to do. And then everything else is just going to be like as stamina refills, things of that nature. We'll just be going for um, uh, energy uh, for for uh, pushing more story. Right. Uh, so team comp, we're going to be bringing Laling this time. So if you do have Laling, um, you can use him again. If you have Azure Dragon, you can go for him. I want to just use Laling because he does offer the defense break. So we'll just be able to take advantage of that for now. Um, and then later on, once I get Death Guard Hay, we're going to alternate back in Azure Dragon because that will be just much better. Um, so we're going to go for Bulk, though, because this uh, boss does hit pretty hard. Um, and we want to try to at least clear it to some degree with everybody kind of being up, if possible. Um, if you have any extra like EXP to give value, like Bulk value, then yes, by all means, please use it. Um, so, yeah, we don't really have much, but let's go ahead and get her to level 40. That probably can make a difference in terms of her surviving all right there we go and then we can also uh we'll hold off on five starring champu just because i feel like we're so close to just jumping right into the six star for the ling and that's going to be really important for tomorrow all right so let's go ahead and let's get into it all right so yeah we should have a lot more stat value coming out jiang Man going first like i said it's like yeah the stats kind of suck but she needs to go first because she's going to make your life much easier when trying to activate and get rid of these detonations um so that you're doing more damage um and then after the fact you can kind of focus on the stat that she needs to scale it which is attack all right there we go so that's actually pretty nice right there 
already. Nice. And she got the two follow-ups. That was actually really nice. Back into the S3. Jeez. Yeah, somebody. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. Okay, so yeah, we're not taking nearly as much damage as if we were getting hit by all three, which is actually pretty massive because that means the in-between heals that are required or that we're going to need is just going to come from the, um, the subsequent round heal that you get. All right, there we go. Here we go. Chronos time. Now, we, like I said, the goal here is to actually have, if we can, the whole team survive. But if we can at least beat it, then we can just uh, do multi-battle and have it run. We're not going to do memo chips. Like, if you're ever in a situation where it's not consistent, do not use memo chips, okay? Um, you want to do the multi-battle at that point. All right, so let's see. Okay, so do 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 do. Yeah, okay, so the team is actually sitting pretty nice. Um, Laling, every time he gets his S2, will proc a defense break. So we can get that on top of like the Seer and all that other crap. We'll actually be like kind of going crazy. We got Hung Yue with the Dispel. She's really, really strong with that. And then Leora's maintaining that Seer. Again, you have Leon. You have other characters that can maintain that Seer for you too. I think also Death Guard Hay, once you get Death Guard Hay. All right. And then, yeah, honestly, yeah, even just working on and getting that stat change significantly is increasing, like, the overall team survivability. Like, everybody's actually sitting pretty nice right now. And then we probably might be able to do, like, off cam, I might be able to complete nine, but I'm not pushing it just because nine, nine is a little bit of a jump. Not crazy, but it's enough, right? All right, so let's see. We should be able to eat that roar. All right, nice. Okay, so full team actually really really good here and then that's gg okay so we are able to actually complete this for stage eight okay guys so in three days we already have chronos eight knocked down which means we are already halfway done with chronos <laughs> and that's a two minute clear it's not bad um so again if you're if you are able to blitz that comfortably by all means try that the next one we're jumping up to level 53 so i'm going to feel a little bit more comfortable probably going into day four tackling like nine or ten uh as we go up uh because we'll probably also have some better gear opening up for us as well uh so for the time being Burn all the rest of your stamina into story if you can. Um, and then from there, farm a little bit of chrono so that you can get some better pieces. And then we'll be back at it for tomorrow. So I know that this video is a little bit longer, but um, again, they're probably all going to be like this because I want to make sure that each video is helping you out for the day. This is basically a full day's worth of grinding that we're talking about here. So um, yeah, it probably will be a little bit more lengthy, right? Um, but again, guys, if you have any questions, don't be afraid to let me know in the comment section down below. I hope that the series really is helping you guys. Um, but that's going to be that, guys. Everyone, stay blessed, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.